Five years ago, a tragic event cost the lives of millions. Overwhelmed by the guilt for the part he played in the destruction, he was driven mad. Here's your look at the new Hyatt Toys Injustice 2 Superman Exquisite Mini. Exquisite Mini is a new stand series for 118th super articulate action figures from Hyatt Toys. To get this review underway, we're going to first figure out how tall the Man of Steel is. Now, he's going to be a little bit smaller, as with all the other exquisite minis that we've looked at. Stopping the Ultra Measuretron 5000 right there. According to the tape measure, the figure stands at a very small 4.1 inches in height. Centimeters, 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 yells the crowd. Centimeters, you're looking at 10.6 centimeters in height. Here's a couple of fun size comparisons. We'll put Man of Steel next to one of the Predator figures that we looked at. Also from the Exquisite line. Also from the folks over at Hyatt Toys. Probably should have picked a Predator that stood a little bit easier. There we go. And uh, speaking of ones that don't stand too well, unless you make use of the tail, this was the Alien that we had to look at also from the Exquisite Mini lineup. You can kind of already see that these are a smaller scale figure lineup, but this really answers the call that I've had for the longest time of wanting a company to release three and three quarter inch, or in this case, one eighteenth scale figures that I can put on display shelves because I've always been a big fan of G.I. Joe's. These are sort of of that same scale. Like with the other figures that we had to look at too, Hyatt Toys includes for Superman his own display stand, or at least the Injustice display stand. We're also going to be looking at the Batman. Oh, I just gave it away. We're also going to be looking at the Batman too, and uh, I don't know if they have the same stands for both of them, but of course we're going to look at that when we get a look at the Cape Crusader. I really like the texturing details to him. I'm trying to see if this is actually supposed to be anything I mean, it's a really neat looking flooring. It's got this awesome metallic purple color scheme to it that just seems to glow and pulsate when you look at it. One thing that is good about it is if you flip it around, oops, flip it around, you can see that there are the little slot points there. And of course, they still come with the eye-shaped little capital eyes that you can connect them to the other stands. He came with two. I just, I'm just showing you the one for the time being. The other thing as well, being that they are uniforms, they're universal together, the shape-wise, that you can really connect it, say, this one here is the Predator one, and then we've also got the floor grading there from the uh, the Xenomorph. So again, you can you know mix and match these. You can make a much bigger terrain display, and uh, you know you can display the figures that way. You know, the interesting thing about this display stand, I don't know if you can see it, there is one peg right there, a small peg, that you really only see it until the light starts hitting it right. If you compare that to the one that came with the Xenomorph, it's a much bigger display peg. And I know this one was really geared towards more of the Colonial Marines than it was for the Xenomorph. But I'm just curious because I haven't actually yet tried this. Oh, right, yeah. I forgot the Xenomorph. That scraps that idea. I forgot that the Xenomorph didn't have pegs on the undersides of its seat. Uh, so it does have a stand peg. And as you can see, Superman underneath does have peg holes for his feet. So you can just tap that into place. You sort of have to just kind of wiggle it on there and eventually you get Superman to stay in place. I wouldn't do the blizzard test. That's the Dairy Queen blizzard test where you would tip it upside down. I don't know if the peg would hold him, but it does keep him in place at the very least if you want to put him in some more dynamic poses, which I'll probably end up doing with this figure. So there's your display stand. Um, again, pretty much what we've seen before with the other Hyatt toy releases, just for the fact that now this one does have some neat texturing to it. And of course, this pop of metallic purple. We'll move that to the side and we'll have a look at some of other Superman's accessories. It comes with a pair of flying or grabbing hands, if you will. Ideal if you want to, if you start collecting these Hyatt toys, I think have a full slated lineup of uh, future Injustice figures and other DC figures, so you could probably make use of these hands somewhere along the lines, or you can also pretend like Superman is flying, an option that's also available as well. Um, he actually did come with those hands out of packaging. I just thought for the opener, it would make a little bit more sense to start him off with closed fists, but if you want to just change out the hands, you just unpeg them. There's the peg hole right there, or there's the ball peg, and just find the appropriate hand. Thumbs go in, of course, and uh, there's Superman's hands. Closed fists, open hands, and there's your hand options. 
He does also come with an interchangeable head uh, available as well, but I think what we'll do first is we'll look at the defaulted head that comes included with this one. Now, it's a decent looking head sculpt, I have to admit. I really like the head on Superman here. Uh, the sculpt is pretty good. I mean, it certainly blows away some of the stuff that we were getting eventually back in the day was the uh, Infinite Crisis. I'm trying to think of that smaller lineup of DC three and three quarter inch figures. Did a review of those when they first came out. And of course the line got heavily bombed and uh, you know the line stopped being released. But uh, I really do like the head sculpt on this one quite a bit. I don't know what's going on with this part of Superman's head right here though. You can see that there's almost just this line at the bottom of his jaw. I don't notice it's on the other side. I mean, again, it unless he's kind of grinding his teeth together and, you know, you get that little bit of muscle around the cheek area, a little bit of that jawline, but I don't know what's going on right here. See this little line that's coming across right on his head? It's a bit noticeable, unfortunately, but still, if you look at it from the front, I guess maybe it's not as noticeable if you're looking at it from the front. Kind of looks a bit like Tom Welling, actually, which is somewhat ironic for him being in Smallville and all. He does also come with this head sculpt, which, even though the teeth, or I guess that's his mouth, his mouth or his lips are a little on the purple side, I'm kind of actually digging this head sculpt just to show you how it looks. We're going to wiggle this head off. You kind of have to hold the neck because the... Uh, you can see there, the neck is its own separate piece. So there's a ball joint here, and then there's a ball joint on the top there. So we're just gonna attach this head sculpt. When I first got the figure out, I thought that that purple was actually his teeth. And now, of course, seeing it again, getting a closer look at it outside of its packaging, I realize now it's his lips. It's a little jarring with the lips, but I do like the coloring that they added to the eyes the heat vision there. Now he doesn't have, of course, anything that could be projected out from his eyes, but it's definitely a really neat look for him. And again, if we just put it next to the defaulted head, there's the two, so you can see them side by side. So much more of an evil or Superman versus this one right here. The hair sculpt is about the same. I guess to some extent, the face is very similar as well, even though like this area down below he doesn't, he seems to have a little bit more of a smile, a bit of a sinister smile versus the defaulted head right here. So those are all the accessories that come included with the figure. As we work our vision down, uh, we'll have a look at all the cool little features that are all over this suit. First and foremost, of course, this is the Injustice suit. So things like shoulder pads, Something that you don't normally see Superman wearing too often with his costume, but this one does have the shoulder pads. The shoulder pads are softer plastic. I don't know if you can see it. They are tabbed actually not to his arm, but rather his torso area here. I like the coloring. The coloring is a bit more, I don't want to say like a metallic blue because there's no real sheen to it, but it's very much a darker, very dark, dark blue. Uh, you can see like the little lines there forming out his armor here. He's kind of more like armored up, S almost similar to the uh, Man of Steel costume, of course, minus the shoulder areas here. Uh, the cape, I'm not really sure why this part of the cape is tied off. I mean, it's it comes out of the packaging like that. I don't know if they just did it to keep it to keep it more closer to the torso so it didn't didn't come out as much. I'd have to again look back at the Injustice 2 Superman designs to see if actually that is the case there, whether he really does actually have those little tied off areas there in his, in his cape. The cape is tabbed into the front. He's got these little front pieces here that basically are affixing that are mounting the cape to his torso. The cape does have a long flow to it. I'm happy that to see that they used a material rather than a plastic, because it just has a, there's something to be said for a figure that has natural fabric capes rather than, you know, synthetic molded plastic. You just get a little bit more of a feel to it. And again, it has more natural flow when you are moving the figure around. Uh, the upper emblem there, the Superman emblem is, as you can see, they're raised done in a very, very dark, 
I talk a little bit about the dark blue, but I mean like the dark, dark red, it's very much like a, almost like a burgundy color. And then he's got the gold in there in the recessed areas of the S. As we make our way down, we get a little bit more of that gold present along with that burgundy that's on the front of his belt. It's very much a different shape of belt than we're also very much accustomed to. That's one of actually the neat things about Injustice and Injustice 2. I didn't really actually play too much of Injustice 2, but played extensively in Justice 1, completing many of the story modes. But uh, all of their armors are very much, their costumes very much are redesigns to the original comic outfits. I think, again, my least favorite of the costumes was Batman's. Again, I really like the, the sculpting here on the legs, the torso area here, where you've got these little swooshes of addis additional molding that they've added to the costume. Again, as we make our way further down, we are treated to the very dark burgundy colored boots. They almost have a very similar sort of shape to them than the, uh, the thigh area here. Just again, in a different color. The undersoles of his shoes even do have texturing to it. This is Hyatt China, and then on the other side there we've got DC. Let's go through his posability now. So, I mean, these guys are pretty posable, I have to admit. Like, their head rotates all the way around. We've already looked at this already, that he does have two ball joints. He's got a ball joint there, and then he's got a ball joint up at the top. So, like, the neck on its own, even not even including the head, the neck moves up, back and forth, around, and then you've got the secondary ball joint working for just the head. Now, between the two, again, you're going to get a lot of movements from the head area. The upper torso does have a ball joint. There's the ball joint inside there. The arms move out. And as we actually talked about this before, being that where the shoulder pads are hinged, these are just, again, a soft plastic, it doesn't limit any of the, any of the posability in the arms. Like, the arms can hinge out. You can rotate, rotate them technically all the way around, and you can see how the shoulder aids to kind of go with the arm, and not actually restrict the arm. They bend in the elbow, a rotation in the in the forearm area, and then whatever hand, this hand or this hand you have in place, are both on a ball joint. So you can move the hand back and forth, and you can rotate them all the way around. Uh, he does have a waist swivel, kind of a ball joint in the waist. The hand seems to pop off a little too frequently. Legs split. Uh, they go forward, they go back, they have a swivel in the top cut of the thigh right there. And this technically could rotate all the way around. I don't know why you would want to do that, but in case you wanted to, it rotates all the way around. It has a double hinge on the knee, there's one. And get the second one going there. Probably a little easier on this one, there we go. Double hinge on the knee. This one just happens to be a little bit stiff up there. But he's got the double hinge in the knee, and uh, he's got the hinge in the foot, which also rocks back and forth as well. So really a very poseable, smaller scale Superman of my collection. I mean, certainly there's also the DC Multiverse figures, but these ones benefit because they are very super detailed. I like the coloring. I'm not too partial on the Injustice design, but I think somehow it works well for this smaller scale figure. I like the armor. I surprised actually that I do, but I even like that this figure seems to work well with the shoulder pads affixed to the top of his torso. He's got some good coloring to him, and the interchangeable heads certainly go a long way as well, depending on which way you want to display the Man of Steel. Injustice 2 is a property that lends itself very well to the Hyatt Toys brand. The fact that you have smaller 118th scale, super postable, super detailed figures with their own display stand sort of writes itself for how you want to display these guys on the shelf. The fact that they are as postable as what they are, when eventually we have a look at the Cape Crusader, I'll probably put the two combatants one in front of the other, looking at each other face to face, about to square off. Kind of like what we started having a look at here in the final looks at the Man of Steel. I like the detailing that they put into this figure. Even like the little ridges and textured points in his suit showcase well here in the smaller plastic torso and smaller frame that you wouldn't normally expect a Man of Steel to come in. With the multiverse line sort of gone and the, uh, the Infinity Crisis or Infinite Crisis or whatever that line was called, 
This by far is a much more superior sculpt on these figures. Unfortunately though, these aren't figures that you're going to be able to readily find in retail stores. Hyatt Toys brand as a whole is something that suits better to specialty markets. So what I would re recommend is checking out your local comic book store and see first of all if they even have these in stock. If they don't, Step B is ask the person that's working there and see if they can order these ones in for you. Again, I really like DC. For me, myself, I've always been a bigger DC fan than I have been a Marvel brand, and always really wanting smaller scale figures, Hyatt Toys really has answered the call. Uh, from what I know, they're releasing or planning to release a whole lineup of Injustice 2 figures and also DC characters of the 118th scale. So if you've already collected like the Predator lineup and the Alien lineup from also Hyatt Toys, maybe don't rule out the fact of picking these ones up as well. They're, like I said, pretty cool, pretty neat, small, superposable figures. At the very least, I really like the Man of Steel for the fact that he does have the interchangeable head option and the fact that he has the interchangeable hands. The only thing I really would have changed to this figure is even at the back of the packaging, they sort of show the cape as if it had a wire frame to it. As we looked at in this review, this figure unfortunately doesn't come with a wire frame to the edges of its cape. So you really can't put the cape in any dynamic pose. It sort of just ends up draping to the back of the figure. That's really the smallest gripe that I can make for an otherwise really spectacular lineup. And I can't wait to have a look at the Batman on this channel as well. Today, like I said, we were having a look at the new Hyatt Toys. This was the Injustice 2 Superman Exquisite Mini. And exquisite, he certainly was. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Hyatt Toys reviews, there's a whole playlist just for Hyatt Toys. And hey now, while you're at it, why don't you hit that also that little subscribe button that's just below this video, if you haven't done so already, because certainly more videos will be coming soon to this channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.